Talk, set it up. Set it up. So he had a uh, interview with the Breakfast Club, and this is uh, one of their long one of their long ones. Usually their interviews are like 20, 25 minutes, thirty mm-hmm. minutes. This mm-hmm. was like an hour, so they were going in, and. Throughout the whole interview, he was kind of sunning everybody there. Like he, kept, I thought he was joking at right, first, but right. he kept trying to um, go at their hip hop knowledge. Mind you, these are hip hop radio. Yeah, so they jockeys. do have some knowledge of. And one is a some DJ, like you know, what I'm saying yeah. he's a radio right. jockey. One is a whole DJ, and he's like really. And then not all of them are over forty. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's very disrespectful. Yeah, he yeah. was just going in like, nah, y'all kids, y'all don't know about this stuff, and then. They asked him about uh, his, I guess, philosophies on uh, signing, uh, signing talent that have drug problems mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. that, and they mm-hmm. put him on the spot with the Dame Jay Z situation. Yeah, yeah. So I, I thought, like- but you know, but throughout the throughout it, he was dropping some gems too. So it was weird, like okay, so he so- was giving it up, and he was also signing them at the same yeah, time. Yeah, at the same time. So it was like <clears throat> I didn't really know how to feel about it. And I like, and me personally, like I know his history, so it's just kind of like, even though he was giving some real insightful info, it was just kind of like, nah, dog, I know about you. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um. Okay. My take. Uh. Again, he controlled the entire interview. Right. He was on the offensive to ensure that the outcome of the interview would be in his favor. Um. He has 37 years of knowledge in hip hop. He does. He's been uh, a culture vulture for that long. Okay. Um, And I also noticed, like you said, he was giving up some of the information. The interesting thing about the Dame Dash situation. He was like, who is Dame Dash? As if he no longer exists to me, but he was actually furthering and proving Dame Dash's point. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But he did say something very critical. He said, if they were boys like that, if they were best friends or whatever the case may be, <clears throat> then there was no way I could be able to tear them apart because he gave a scenario. He said, if I told you you did a bad interview and you say you're no longer my friend, you were no longer my, you, was my, you wasn't my friend right. from the beginning. And what he was saying is, Jay Z and Dane Dash were not friends because if they were, then there was no way they would let a Jew like me come in between them, right? So in in that essence, that was the first time he bluntly just said that. Doesn't mean he wasn't working on the weaker link, all right, Mm -hmm. of the two. And Jay-Z is a Brooklyn guy. Let's just keep it gully. Uh, Dame and Biggs, the more Harlem dudes. Brooklyn and Harlem is like... Oil, and, Oil water. and water. For real. And I grew up in the 80s. I'm coming from the Bronx. Harlem is a, a, a world within itself. And Brooklyn, which kept us yeah. all kind of at bay, is a world within itself. So the fact that they got together and the opportunities presented themselves for somebody <clears throat> to come in and do what the Jews guys do, divide and conquer and this and that, and pit this one against that one. It was probably textbook, The Elders of Zion. There's a book, The Elders of the Protocols of Zion, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I read it so long ago. It's probably in your library. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion and these techniques that they use to uh, divide and conquer, pit this one against that one, stamp you with the anti-Semitic terms, mm-hmm. you know, all of this stuff. Then it led me to another aspect of the Jay-Z and Dame Dash relationship. Okay. And that was the house nigga and the field nigga aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for all the Jay-Z fans out there, I'm not suggesting that he is a house nigga. But if I had to choose between the two. In this scenario. In this scenario, Dame Dash is clearly. The field nigga, right? (laughs) This is clearly the field nigga they let in the house, and he tried to take the fucking house over. Jay-Z, on the other hand, played more of a docile role. Spook who sat by... I mean, it... it, Sort of like the spook who sat by the door. Okay, so that had nothing to do with this action. Right, so you just threw some shit in there and tried to confuse me. All right, so now I got to (laughs) create three scenarios. Not only is he the house nigga, he's the spook who sat. Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. For the sake of this, right? Yeah. So in that dynamic, 
And this is important for people out there who are trying to get in the industry or who will never sell their soul and feel that that's important to them. Dame Dash to me represented integrity. He represented honor and respect for who he is at all cost. At all cost. Right. As a result, it cost him his spot in the industry. It cost him to have to run up on uh, uh, Lee Daniels and him to yeah. get his fucking money. It cost him to be uh, sort of outcasted. Now, I want you to associate the outcast, the one out of the industry, the one who didn't sell his soul, the one who smacked Harvey Weinstein for violating as the one who is broke, filled with knowledge, right? Right. Broke. Jay-Z, on the other hand, about to be a billionaire, played more chess than checkers, laughed in their faces, dealt business, you know, show you how to move in a room full of vultures. And without Dame Dash saying it, he's basically, this nigga is a fucking house nigga. Without yeah. Dame saying it, that's how he feels about Jay-Z. As a result, he's about to be a billionaire. There are so many lessons in just that spectrum that I want you to keep in mind because we're going to revisit it later in our conversation. Jay-Z was pissed that P. Diddy was on the Forbes list by himself. Let's just keep yeah. it real, you know. And every time he was on the Forbes list early on, it was with Dame and Biggs. As a part of a conglomerate, Jay-Z knew he had the sauce. He was the main ingredient. Yeah. If you couple that with we wasn't boys from the beginning. Because he, prime example, he's still close with the main ones. And anyway, his main... Who? Jay-Z. Who? Uh, Tata. Tata. Yeah, like, yeah. So think, like, so... If that was the case, if they really were boys, he would have actually... Absolutely. You know, and you got to throw Aaliyah in the mix. Mm. See, now we're getting into some of the layers of mm. it, okay? They both dated Aaliyah. Yeah. Uh, Dame Dash would punk people. Because he, he was nice with his hands. Mm. He would punk Jay-Z and these, uh, mm. some of these dudes. And that's not the business so-called sellout etiquette. Right? We're going to revisit this narrative because it's going to be important when we understand how white supremacy works. And if you're willing to play and if you are willing to not play, right. there is no wrong answer. If you're dealing with integrity and all of this stuff, the way their system is structured and set up is going to come at a cost. If you are content with that, you're great. If you want to play... You know what I'm saying? Where sky may be the limit. Right. It's going to come with a different set of rules. It's going to include a lot of people who are culture vultures, who are just on, on the bottom line, as Leo Cohen told you. He said, I'm going to take talent over a junkie any day. If he has talent, I'm a businessman. Yeah. And he clearly said, I'm an opportunist. Yeah, he, he flat out said that. He flat out said, yeah, was, I'm an opportunist. Was, whoa. I'm a businessman. He can say that because he's sitting in a radio station run by who? Jews. Oh, right. right? Let's keep it a buck. All right? So he's in a radio station run by Jews. They all brotherhoods and partner. He can say whatever he wants to say. On, a, on an interview that's going to be played on his... Now we get into the YouTube stuff. Yeah, the, yeah. He put the, Leon Cohen. For those of you who do not know, is the CEO of YouTube now, and the effects of it have been felt immediately. I've had brothers like Doggy Diamonds and Choke No Joke say the the way they pay out now is just different. Mm. Like something took place. Leon, who I used to call Liar, right? Cohen. I coined that phrase. I said he's a liar, the way his name is spelled, and co-hen, co means part, a like co-producer, right. co-writer, and a hen is a female chicken. So I said this nigga's a liar who's part female chicken. That that last part had nothing to do with I'm, nothing. Hey, hey, hey. I'm he just, just, <laughs> he's throwing it in there. That right? reach was ugly. This nigga's a liar. You ain't going to throw out your shoulder who's, with that reach, dude. Who's part female chicken. That last okay. part. Was, okay. So. So now he is monetizing YouTube differently, all right? We may not have a home here 
much longer. All depending on what, because at the current moment, Willie D from the Ghetto Boys. Wait, he just lost his channel. He just lost his channel. Yeah. Right? And what was it for? Like some patriotism stuff? Yeah. All against the flag? Yeah. I got to get all the details, but now with Leo here, he is in position and he's going to start dictating the algorithm of the culture. So we have to keep all of this in mind. So he did drop some jewels about where the future of music could be heading. You know what I mean? And this and that. And then he got real funny. And when he was talking about uh, who's the artist that just shouted him out from 300? Uh, that was Rich the, Kid. Rich the Kid. Yes. And he said some slick shit like, yo, but we don't play that shit. And he sounded like Will Farrell when he <laughs> said, David don't play that shit. You know what I mean? And he meant that shit because Leon Cohen is Mossad. He's Jewish intelligent and he's a fucking gangster, right? Meaning he moved with other Jews who do things that are not beneficial for our culture. Now, he also made a lot of black people rich at the same time, so they are co-conspirators. Mm. He didn't just show up on his own. Now, he took Def Jam over, ran Rick Rubin out of there because Rick Rubin, even though he too was a Jew, appeared to be more about the culture and the artistic expression of the art form. Right? He also mentioned Professor Griff. He did, yeah. He mentioned Professor Griff on some shit like, yeah, Professor Griff was talking about some Caucasoid Mountain shit. Yeah, Griff was dropping that shit about where these Jews come from. And what he did was, what did he do? He did the divide and conquer. Yeah. He split the two. He took Chuck D. Why not take Griff and Chuck D to the Holocaust Museum so that maybe Griff could go, oh, I did not yeah. know. <laughs> That's not what he yeah. did. He took Chuck D, right, to the Holocaust yeah. Museum and almost forced Chuck D to relive a ritual that was played out when Elijah Muhammad had to exile Malcolm. Mm. When he said some shit about John F. Kennedy, you know, the chickens coming yeah, home to roost. Right, yeah. Public Enemy represented the new nation of Islam in the sense that it was hip hop, Chuck's voice reverberated still my dude chuck i appreciate you the whole nine yards and if chuck was the main dude griff would be malcolm x mm. the aesthetics of what you saw in public enemy was from griff was from griff all the s1w's yes. and this and that and he was uh training he, he was, was he was training and he was giving out uh, books for he was giving um people people books, books to yeah. read uh the s1w's could fuck you up Right. Quick, He's some incidents, yeah. dudes jump on stage and ka ka Side note, um, when Griff is talking about that, uh, he's not playing. I saw Griff take a sword off the wall in Chicago. And I'm saying Griff is like, he might just be talking that karate mm. shit. I seen him take a sword off the wall. And after he got finished ad-libbing and doing, I said, don't fuck with him. Because mm. no, he knows that shit. So back to the story. So they did the divide and conquer. Yeah. And Chuck D had to denounce Griff. Right? right? Had to denounce him. We seen it play out again when Farrakhan had to denounce Khalid Muhammad. You see what I'm saying? Right. For talking about these same Jews. Yeah. So we understand that there is a power in structure in place. And I'm going to do something called, which was supposed to be my original book, the hip hop relation between blacks and Jews. Now, Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam put out a dynamic book years ago. It's in your library. You keep called uh, the, the Jewish relationship, or you know what I'm saying, or, or the, the, the relationship between uh, blacks and Jews. And it's talking about the Jewish participation in the slave trade. Mm, okay. Because their names never show up, <laughs> but they got paid too, right? So with that being said, we, we saw a ritual play out, which got Griff denounced. Thankfully, the group is back together. These dudes, happy birthday to Professor Griff and Chuck D, born on the same day in the same year. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shout out to them. August 1st. So yesterday was both. What are the chances? Yeah. What are the chances Chuck Moms and Griff Mom decided to let that energy out and it changed the world, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. So that's the gist of the Leo Cohen. I was a little long-winded on that. Yeah, that was. I mean, it was an interesting interview to say. But the just least. it was an interesting interview to say the least. 
So I just wanted to give my perspective. Peace. This is the Black Dot, author of the underground classic Hip Hop Decoded and Urban Culture Decoded. For 15 years, I've been decoding hip hop, breaking it down, giving you it piece by piece, the DNA of hip hop, all of its multifaceted components. For the next 15 years, I want you to join me as I give you hip hop recoded and we put it back together, giving you its RNA so that we don't leave the next generation lost. But I have to give you a disclaimer. I am not a hip hop guru. This is not hip hop law. This is for pure entertainment purposes only. I am not a doctor. So before you take the red pill and go with us into the matrix of hip hop, consult your doctor to see if hip hop recoded is for you. With that being said, we thank you for your patronage and we see you on the other side. Peace.